to get out of the way and turn it over to the Mars crossband exercise. Um, while they're cooking up, I'm going to make another very shameless plug for the signal report. Please fill out your signal reports. And if you would like a hard copy, paper copy, I do have several of those up front if you'd like a paper copy. All right. And it's all yours. All right, there we are. <laughs> All right, I think everybody knows me. Uh, I'm W4 GML, Ham, and no, that's not a nickname. No, that is a nickname, and it's not a ham. I've been a ham all my life. It's the day I was born. Okay, uh, I'm also a member of Air Force Mars. Uh, we have a fairly active, or else we won't see it. Over the, over the region, the wing, the fourth communications wing, we have a pretty active group. Uh, I guess we have about maybe 10 members here in Memphis. And so I want to present to you what, what uh, a little bit about Air Force Mars. I, I'm standing right in the way, aren't I? There we go. Uh, just kind of, for those that aren't familiar with Mars, that's military auxiliary radio system. Uh, it was uh, formed back in the 20s by an Army signal officer, and their purpose, the purpose was that uh, they wanted uh, qualified radio people to teach the Army enlistees about radio because it was a new communications medium for the Army uh, right after World War I. So that's the reason Mars was uh, uh, started. And they could bring civilians in to teach the guys and let the, the experienced uh, uh, communicators get out in the field and use the equipment. So there's uh, Army Mars, uh, Air Force Mars, there used to be Navy Marine Corps Mars, but the Navy decided in its ultimate wisdom they didn't need Mars anymore. So yeah. they're now having a problem training people in HF and everything else. That, a lot of people in the Mars group could have helped them with, and given them some advice and so forth. Uh, our group here in Memphis, we do have an active duty warrant officer that is, uh, works out at the base. He's a uh, personnel manager, but he's also an IT guy and radio guy, and he came out of, came out of special operations. So uh, he's been a, invaluable to our group here in town. He's getting ready to retire, we're going to keep him. All right, Mars. Okay, the face of Mars in the 21st century. It's a lot different than maybe what you heard about 10, 15 years ago. And if any of you are like me in Vietnam era, uh, Mars sent thousands and thousands of free messages uh, all over the world to families, notifying of births, birthday greetings, hey, I'm all right. You heard about the big explosion, but I'm okay. All that kind of stuff. And I was one of those people that got a Mars message. My dad was stationed aboard the Forrestal aircraft carrier in the Gulf of Tonkin when it burned. Lost 100, right at 170 men. And because of the fire and the, the, the uh, ship was in two, within two hours of being scuffed because of the fire. So the day after, I'm sitting in, I was stationed in Korea. I was sitting there with my bags packed, waiting on notification from Red Cross. When I got a message from the Mars operator in Seoul, South Korea, all it was was, I'm fine, I will write later. That's all the message was. But, uh, and I the neat thing about it was, was my dad sending the message. He sent 3,300 messages from the time they left the Gulf of Tonkin and they pulled into the Pacific Bay, uh, Philippines. So Mars did a great thing back, back in the day. We do a little different now. We're no longer tasked by the military. Uh, we're now attacked, attacked by the Department of Defense. We have an assistant secretary in the Department of Defense that's passing Mars. Uh, we're doing stuff now. We're we're actually working with some uh, communications groups in Fort Bragg and other places that are learning about HF 
And rather than sitting here and transmitting each other across the, across the room, they go to the field and they transmit and we talk, we work with them live on the air. So we're also doing it with Canadians. We've got a thing going where we're going to partner with the Canadian Mars. Well, let's put it this way, Canadian, Australian, and New Zealand Mars. That's the Canadian Sigma Corps, I guess you call it. We're going to be partnering with them and doing some cross-band tests with us. We're still uh, uh, tasked to uh, work with any military, the government, federal government, uh, and we're still continuing the le legacy of service with the American military. We no longer work with local. And the only way we work, work with a local government is if uh, we are uh, tasked by Chief Mars out of Scott Air Force Base. Biggest thing we got was still, we're still very much aligned with the Air Combat Command Cyber Group. That's our bosses as we go up the line. We're in the, I'm, uh, I'm in the fourth communications wing. Uh, we have 10 wings, very much aligned, very much aligned like the Air Force is. Uh, northeast is wing one, wing two, and we're down in the southeast, we're wing four. Still the same group that we've had all along, it's just we're considered that, and we have. We're set into the 12th cyber uh, uh, group, and uh, so we're actually being uh, looked at and fed information right straight out of the military. Uh, David Actry, he's our Chief Mars. Mark Allen is our Deputy Chief Mars. Uh, for once, finally, our Chief Mars, his job is Mars. Now I know. Before, he had other jobs, and Mars was just something, to say, hey, do it. So we have, and that's all he's, he's concerned with. Uh, Air Force Mars has 700 plus HF radio stations on the continental U.S., Pacific, and Caribbean. And we are actually uh, actively participating with, with the aircraft. All right, this was a 1950s well equipped station. Uh, some old vintage gear there. Now we're looking here, this is. Uh, uh, Pentagon, the Mars station. Guess who knows that? Barry Goldwater. He was he was in their fourth Mars. Uh, Camp Pendleton. They have a they have a had a Mars station there. And here's uh, uh, AIA AIR in. Uh, uh, Vietnam and the chief uh, operator for the Mar all the Mars groups in Vietnam is Sal Negro, and he is a member of the fourth communication plane. Twenty-three and beyond. Man, that looks a little bit like mine, but not quite. Not quite. You got more stuff than that in your truck. I had, more stuff. <laughs> I, had, I had more stuff than that out of free fest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're known as an organization and a leading edge. We we develop our own software for our uh, the we use a military uh, uh, digital sequence uh, digital program, and we we develop our own. No cost to the taxpayer. Uh, message traffic is all digital. It's all encrypted now. Uh, that's a that's a that's a picture of our NOS program, Network Operation Software System NOS. Uh, it's changed every six months with different. Uh, uh, codes and everything. It's all encrypted. Uh, all Mars servers are interoperable. In other words, we talk to Mars guy, uh, Army Mars. We work together. Uh, 
And that's uh, some of the pictures of some of the guys in the, the military that's learning about HF now. But they knew about it years ago and they just give it up. Well, we're going to do satellites until they figure out what happens if they explode a bomb in, in space and knock out all the satellites. So, uh, of course, we do, uh, we are able to, uh, to support governments in the time of emergency, but not on our own. We have to be uh, we have to be dispatched uh, by uh, a chief Air Force Marshal. But we can work with shares and people like that with a regular hand license. That's not a problem. Shares, how many people in here are shares? Okay, several. Uh, this is in, uh, it's administered by the uh, Homeland Security, FEMA, the old FEMA type stuff. Uh, this is some of the stuff we do in activities, DOD and DHS, uh, set up operations, we form base support teams, some of the, some of the Mars uh, groups and uh, on Air Force bases, they, uh, they form a base support team which does a lot of work within the base. Uh, and a lot of, we do a lot of training, good training. Uh, Again, cross-service collaboration with Army Mars. Annual events. We have several things uh, involved with this. Uh, several years ago, I went out with the State Guard and had an all-day seminar with them out in the field about communication. So uh, we do a lot, of, a lot of stuff like that. Here's the next. We have. Wing traffic nets daily, twice a day. Administrative nets in the week, trans global, uh, voice and digital, trans global, a ALE networks. Everybody familiar with ALE? Automatic. Automatic link establishments. The way the uh, radios are scanning a, a group of frequencies to combine the best, the best frequency. Mars radio. Mars Radio, or also known as Phone Patch Net, they handle about 2,000 phone patches a year from aircraft. They're out over the Atlantic and they have something they need to get back to their uh, headquarters about something that needs to be fixed as they land or something like that. And HF is the only way to do it that goes through Mars Radio. And out of those 2,000, about 1,800 of them are military work related phone patches. Some of them are personal, but most of them are the other. Uh, we have a military support net, daily training nets, emergency communication net. We do a one exercise a quarter. We got uh, uh, COMEX 24-2 uh, coming up next month, our end of the month. So, uh, and we have a joint service interoperability net that's on 24-7. Air Force Mars Special Operations, Mars Radio, Phone Patch Net, Connors, and on outside of Connors Coast. And this tells you about our uh, uh, Mars radio is on 24-7 trained staff by trained uh, trained volunteers. I think they do about six hour six hours off and on, and they do it 24-7. 200 passes a month, more than 60 percent involving official business and support of operational activities. So Mars is active. Homeland Security again. Oh, that's the same one. What did I do? There we go. Military support net. This used to be the space support net that was uh, backup communications for the space shuttle. But since the space shuttle program closed down, uh, we've now gone to military support. Net. We have Mars at the Pentagon, both Air Force and uh, Army Mars staff it. <coughs> if you want to join us, you have to be 18. Doesn't make a difference what class amateur license you have. We'll be, we operate on military frequencies. The FCC has no say so. Uh, I'm sure the military is a little bit stiffer than the FCC is. We don't have any trouble. If you don't have a license, 
I can tell you about a guy that had to run classes and get you the license. <laughs> <laughs> if you want information, you can go to this website or you can make a phone call and they will send you a package to tell you all about what you need. All right, now, that's the end of, the end of this one. I've got one more to show you. I saw in there Sibyl Air Patrol. What, do, what interaction y'all have other than just? Uh, we don't. We we have not. They, they're kind. Of, oh, I know. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. They're a little bit uh, exclusive. stuck up. No, they're just exclusive. Uh, <laughs> they're air <everybody. laughs> All right. <laughs> this you, you're you're gonna uh, come on. You're gonna see some. You're gonna see some. Repeat pictures here. But what my program is really about <coughs> is that next month, May the 11th, we will be running the Armed Forces Day cross band radio test. What this is, is this gives uh, ham radio operators an opportunity to talk to military stations. Uh, at the end of this, I have a list that uh, I'll show you. Uh, We'll be, the, the military stations, which Millington is going to be one of them, we'll be transmitting on military frequencies, and we'll be listening on the handband, so it will be a split operation. Those of you who are not HF people, here's a grand opportunity for you to come out and learn a little bit about HF. Uh, we'll be running from, we'll be going from 7 o'clock uh, Saturday morning to about, uh, well, whenever the, Whenever the activity dies out that afternoon, uh, come on out. We can set you down and help you let you log for a while and get you on the air. What's the date again? The date? Huh? The, date? Huh? the date? May the 11th. Saturday. Always Saturday. Saturday weekend. Day Mother's Day weekend. Right. Saturday before Mother's Day. <laughs> and it really, Armed Forces Day is actually on the 18th. But guess what's happening on the 18th of May? Date and ham so they do this one week early so that uh, everybody gets it. Just All right, Joint Service Mars. Uh, Mars Annual Armed Forces Day Communication Test. We've made it, we've made as many. I've been doing this, Pat, how long have we been doing Armed Forces Day? 20 years? A lot. Back to the, yeah. back to Huxtable. Yeah. Matter of fact, I think the first one was 10 cans. But anyway, uh, we made, Time, time, we made five, six hundred contacts. So it's not like it's just, it's, it's pretty active. Because there are a lot of guys out there, they're, 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 they're going to die off now. You'd be surprised that when I put Millington on the air, how many guys, oh yeah, I used to know where W4 ODR is. Is it still there? They used to come, when they were school, that Millington had come over the hand shack. Uh, air Force Mars, this is us. Uh, it's been in existence 75 years, uh, 1948. Uh, of course, this is this was put out in 2023. They haven't made one out, made one for this year. Same guy, he's on this one too. So is so is Barry Goldwater, and that guy, BFC, and there's Chief. All right, this is most of this stuff is just basically it came off of the recruiting. Uh, it's just something to to uh, let you know about a little bit about what Mars does and what it uh, it's not just a an on air club anymore. Uh, we've had radio, we've had support from this club and MARA in the years past to uh, our forces that we used to travel around. We used to do it under the auspices of the um, Army Corps of Engineers. So we've been down. We've been down at uh, on, a, on a tugboat. And we've been over on a on a dam across the St. Francis River. We've been several other places. We we even had a couple of years that we did it out in the field at WKNO. So we've been all over the place. Uh, this was 2009, and this is the group that it went to the Huxtable pumping station over in Mariana, Arkansas, and uh, we set up four stations over there. We set up one up in the dam. Set one down about a mile away and connected them together by Wi-Fi and, and 
That was, I think that was one of the years that we did about 500, five or 600 contacts. So, how many, how many pumps were pumping that year? Huh? Is that the year they were pumping all None. the pumps? No, uh, that year. No, the water, and they had the water was the water was high, so you can see the water was high, so they probably were pumping. I don't remember. So, if you're interested, if you're interested, it only takes 12 hours a quarter. <coughs> That's one contact a week. One, one, uh, and if you come out to the Navy base on Thursdays when we're out there, that can get you one contact. And we check in every Thursday out at the out at the milling. Uh, again, license we can get you there. Uh, what time are you out there on Thursdays? Seven. I get there around seven o'clock, and we're there till nine, nine thirty, ten. <coughs> I've been there half a day and somebody wants to come out and, and uh, talk ham radio or do something. I'm, I'm there, I'm retired, so. All right, that's, now, let's get to that. I'm sure everybody's saying, well, okay, that's great. Now, where, what are the frequencies? Well, I'll fix the show. I'm fixing the show. How did I get into Hot That's the uh, That's the uh, projector. That's the cooking grill. That's the bot. Your output is turned off. It's on HDMI 2. Yeah, that's what it is.
It worked. It worked. It worked this afternoon. Anyway, you can see this is this is a, this is a station out of out of Millington. We got 19 military stations, uh, starting with the Army Reserve in uh, Barrow, Kentucky, Northern Command, Fort Huachuca, Camp Foster in Okinawa. Uh, Naval Support Activity Mid-South, Whitby Island, Hancock Field, New York, Scott Air Force Base, Travis Air Force Base, California. And now if I can get this thing to come down, here we go. But anyway. Did we get it? Oh, okay. That's right. I've got to move it up here. There we go. All right. Uh, National Guard in Delaware, Naval Radio Station Museum, Newport, the USS Hornet, aircraft carrier in Alameda, California, the uh, the Iowa Battleship in Los Angeles, Midway CB-41 in San Diego. Coast Guard Base in Alameda, Naval Academy, Yorktown in South Carolina, and LST-325 in Evansville, All right. uh, uh, Indiana. Now, I don't know whether any of you remember that, but that LST, they found it in uh, working as a cargo vessel in Italy. Sure and they restored it, and they sailed it all the way from Italy down through the Gulf and up the Mississippi River under the Hernando de Soto Bridge all the way up to Indiana. So it actually, I've got pictures of it and I couldn't, I wish I'd have put it in here, but I had a picture of it coming underneath the same Hernando de Soto Bridge. And last but not least, the Pentagon, WAR. So the old idea is to People, this is what guys will do. They'll, they'll try to work every one of these on all the frequencies they can. We have three frequencies with the air because we don't have too many people. Some supports. We need some operators and loggers. If you don't want to operate, we can put you down logging. But uh, I'll be out there early and I'll get on 80 meters early and try to give out a few contacts on 80 meters and then we'll work 20 and 40 rest of the day. So I need about I need three operators I need three operators and three loggers about every two and a half, three hours all day long. So you only don't stay out there all day. Just come and spend an hour, spend an hour and a half. Yes. Is that the same building? Still the same building? No. Uh, yeah. You know where the fire training is? You know where the fire training is We're on the second floor of the fire training academy. Yeah. So it's still on the base. Still on the north side. But it's uh, under the auspices of Millington. So that's my presentation, guys. I just hope we get a few, get a few people. Yes, uh, when Ham calls out, what he does is he get, he gives a call on the Mars frequency, but he gives the frequency that he's listening on in the Ham band. Yeah. And that's how you do the cross yeah, between you, the Ham and the Mars. In. Tune in on, on one of these frequencies, and that's what those guys will be doing. They'll be trying to transmit on this frequency, and they'll tell you that we're listening at 14250, something like that. And so you would tune your transmitter to that frequency and transmit. Yes? It's a lot of fun if you've never done it because it's very challenging if you've never done split frequencies on your HF rig, go practice because there's some specific setups to do it. And put those, if you got enough memory, put them in memory, because if you're scrambling for a piece of paper, it's, it, can, it can get frustrating. Set up ahead of time. It's a lot of fun. It's been ex-military guy, it's, it's a lot of fun yeah. to Well, talk and, and, and believe me, like, you'd be surprised. We've brought, all, I've been awfully surprised how many people when they realized what this is in Millington, and they went to A school or B school or yeah. C school or Which whatever. Which was a huge uh, Years base. ago, back in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 
And because uh, W4ODR has been there a long time, that's the call sign for the military club. Well, of course, when the Navy's base kicked, kicked us off base, I was a trustee of the call sign, and I'm going to maintain that trusteeship. Because W4ODR, a station, what was it? A station with a, a oh, ODR, odor, station with an air about it. That's what it was. Dirty Rebel. Huh? W4O Dirty Rebel. Yeah, well, we used to call it a station with a certain air about it. So, uh, but we, we, we're maintaining that as long as the city of Millington will leave. If they kick us out of there, we're not, that's it. I'm going to shut it down because there's just no place. The, the, the military just couldn't, they just couldn't take the little bit of electricity and water that we use one day a week in their budget. So they had to let us go. So, anyway, thank you. Ham, thank you very much. We appreciate that. Very informative. <laughs> All right, I'd like to take just real quick, if everybody needs to take a five, well, if we can do shorter, that'd be great. We could do a five minute, no more than five minute break. Two minutes. Be back at 7.52. Uh, and we'll get uh, in touch with Programming Radios with Software by John. Right.